If you experience gout, you know how painful it is and triggered by our favorite foods. Some have even compared to childbirth. But what if I told you that you can have total food freedom and no more fear of a gout flare-up? There are many, many misconceptions and harmful misunderstandings surrounding gout. So I'm busting all of those myths today. Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Kim. I've been a holistic podiatrist for over 30 years now. If you've dealt with gout, you know that it is incredibly painful. Today I'm going to teach you how to alkalize your body, reduce inflammation, and balance your body's acidity to live gout free. Let's get right into it. Now let's talk about number one unexpected cause of gout. Now, because a lot of people think it is what you eat and what you drink. People think it's the red meat, it's the sugar, it's the beer, and the wine. It is true. However, I'm gonna tell you the number one unexpected cause of gout, which is this one. Overproduction of the uric acid level, and then the lack of elimination of the uric acid in your kidneys. Now this is the number one cause because it's responsible for two thirds of the problem. And the other one that everybody knows about it's the high uric acid by eating and drinking is only one third. So this is very, very important for you to understand the number one cause so that you can get your food freedom. Because you don't have to worry about food as much. You have to more worry about not producing it as much and also eliminating uric acid so that you would be gout free. Now first, high uric acid level is not only in producing the liver, but also it's not being eliminated in the kidneys, so you have a high uric acid level. And then your body is too acidic. We're gonna to talk about why. And then you're not taking enough water to wash it off in your, uh, in your uh, kidneys, so you, you are dehydrated. And then if you have high insulin level, like diabetes, you naturally have very high uric acid level at the same time. Then what is gout? Let's talk a little bit about gout. Gout is an arthritis. This uric acid, that's a byproduct of, we're gonna talk a lot about the uric acid. It's a byproduct of your cell's metabolism, and then it becomes uric acid, and it crystallizes in your joints, especially your big toe and other joints. It's extremely painful. And we call them the wind pain. In Korean and Chinese, we call them tong pong. Tong means pain, pong means wind. That means when the wind blows, you have pain. That's how painful this is. This is so painful that next to kidney stones and childbirth, this goes right up there with it. So this is very, very painful situation. Then who gets the gout? Now, about 8.3 million people in the United States have gout. That's a lot of people, like, like eight, nine percent of the people have this. 90% of people male over 40. So a lot of uh, this problem is male and then older male person gets this. About 6% of male and 2% of female. So it's a lot of people get this gout. And as you can see, you're not alone. If you have gout, all these famous people also had gout. Alexander the Great, Michelangelo, Nostradamus, uh, Sir Isaac Newton, Leonardo da Vinci, and Beethoven, and, and Fra uh, Benjamin Franklin, and Charles Dickens. These are famous people. There are a lot more people who had gout. So you're not alone. A lot of people had this problem at the same time. Now, what are the symptoms of gout? First one is you have this joint problem. Because these crystals, we call them urate crystals, this uric acid crystal, ends up in the joint as a sharp, sharp, like needle looking thing and it's poking in the joint, so it's extremely painful. Imagine, millions and millions of this sharp, like, like tack looking thing and it's just attaching, a attacking your joint space, so it's really burning and itching and tingling, and it's red and swollen joint, warm and painful, and it gets so stiff that it's uh, not moving very well, so you can't walk and you can do other things. Nodules and tophi, meaning they crystallize into a big, like a lump of tissue. We call them nodules and tophi, and it becomes red and even purplish skin uh, around it. And you also can get a fever because it's just so painful. And in fact, I've hospitalized a patient. They came in and there was just so much in pain, so I had to put them in the hospital, pump in a lot of uh, morphine and other pain medication to really calm down the inflammation. That's how painful it could be. So how to diagnose gout? If you come see me, this is what I do. First. Well, I don't do this all the time, but first we have to do definitively to see it. I will numb the toe and then I will suck out the fluid and, and send it to the laboratory and they'll look at it under the microscope, microscope to see these crystals that are in there. 
And then you can also do a blood test and then you take the blood and then you take the uric acid and creatinine level and then when you have it higher, obviously, you can have a gout. But when it's low, doesn't mean you don't have it. It's not very dependable um, because I've seen um, really, really swollen, it's definitely a gout type of a problem, but when I take the blood, the uric acid level wasn't high. So it's not that dependable, but if you have a high uric acid level, then you definitely have gout. And then, and then the x-rays and ultrasound and CT scan, we take x-rays to see the progression of this joint because if, if somebody had it for a long time and not, not, did not know that, then you can really mess up the joint and it can cause a lot of arthritis in the joint. So we take an x-ray to look at the integrity of the joint and also you can use ultrasound and CT scan to take a little better look as well. And then uh, where are the gouts? Now gouts are, uh, we talked about the joints, uh, especially the big toe and which is why a lot of people come see me with gout, is that 50% of the problem end up in the, in the big toe. The rest of the problem, it can happen on the fingers, elbows, knees and hips and ankles and shoulders. It can happen in a lot of places, but it happens in the coldest part of the body, your hands and your feet most commonly, because that's, what, that's where it crystallizes. And then the bursa, meaning this a little sac that becomes really hard and painful around the joint. It's like a pillow that uh, protects the joint and that becomes very uh, stiff and painful as well. And it can happen on the tendon sheath, which is not common. I've only seen maybe one or two last 30 years. And then it can happen in your kidney as a kidney stones. You've, you've heard that before. Like it can end up as a cardiovascular disease or you can have a create dry eye like cataracts. And it also can cause a stenosis around your spine as well because it's, it's such a hard crystal, they can crystallize in your joints and it can really mess up and create a lot of arthritis. Then there are two types of uric acid. Now, this is a very important portion that you have to understand to get your food freedom from your gout. The first type is the endogenous. Endogenous, that means that your, your uric acid is created within your own body. Now, this is the part that a lot of people don't know. A lot of people think it's what you eat and what you drink, which is true, but this is the two-third two-thirds of the uric acid that's in your body right now is made from your own body because of the two reasons. Number one is a byproduct of your DNA and RNA breakdown. As you know, our DNA is constantly copying our cells to make proteins. You, know, your, you can make your hair, you can make your skin, you can make your heart. It's making a lot of different things. When you're doing these reactions, you can have a byproduct of these things called a purine. And when this purine breaks down, it's called uric acid. So as you can see, there's a lot of action going on with DNA. So bodies through the metabolism is producing its own uric acid in a daily basis in your liver. And then when your body's not doing well, and uric acid is also an antioxidant. It's a very strong killer of all the bad things, all the bacteria, you can kill a lot of things. It's very strong acid. So you can work as an antioxidant, right? Oxidation, you know, rusting and decaying process, it's antioxidant. So it kills and neutralizes all these toxins to get rid of infection, inflammation, all of those things. And then it's a, it increases your antioxidant because it is an antioxidant. So your body produces it because your body's not doing well. Whether you have infection or inflammation, when you're not healthy, you, you, you have an imbalance of your, all your nutrition and you have a lot of acidic uh, part of your body, then your body produces uric acid to actually help you. So it increases your immune system. It actually stimulates your nervous system to be happier and, and better functioning at the same time. So it has two reasons that your body, especially your liver's making it because your body's breaking down the DNA. And also when your body's not healthy, it works as an antioxidant to help your immune system, help you calm down the inflammation and help your body work better. So, so the diabetics and the obesity, uh, a lot of obese patients tend to produce naturally more uric acid because your metabolism is not working well, your body is really, really acidic. So uric acid is actually there to help you. It's been produced in your liver to actually help you to break down the, you know, all the products as well as help you fight your infection, fight inflammation. So actually it's a good thing for you. The problem is you just cannot get rid of it from your body and there's a reason for that. And then that's why you have this gouty attack. And the other type that we all know about, people know already that exogenous is from the outside. It's only one third. So when you eat these kind of food, you already know this, right? If you got, you already read a lot of things your doctor probably talked to you about. And a lot of animal products, really dense animal products that the red and organ meat has a lot of purine rich type of uh, products, shellfish, anchovy, mackerel, 
even the good plants, right? <laughs> even the beans and lentils and peas and spinach and cauliflower, a lot of really good stuff has a lot of purin in there. They can break down and cause more gout to uh, come about, especially asparagus, which is my favorite. And then obviously you know that beer and then wines and hard liquor has, has an effect that it causes more uric acid level and a lot of high fructose corn syrup on your diet soda and a lot of uh, canned food, a lot of uh, packaged food has a lot of those, a lot of processed food, a lot of soft drinks have a lot of sugar in there that can trigger your uh, gout to come about. A lot of medication like diuretics, uh, aspirin, immunosuppressant, a lot of medication can cause your uric acid level to go up at the same time. So these are the exogenous level only responsible for about one third of your uric acid that you're consuming, you're putting into your body that can trigger your gout, but it's only one third. I want you to really remember that. So then let's recap about this whole situation. What's the number one unknown cause of the high uric acid level that causes gout is we already talked about increased production in your liver to help you. It's a metabolic breakdown of your protein, especially your DNA, and then it, it works as an antioxidant to tamp, tamp down your, your inflammation, your infection, and all those things. So your liver is producing a lot of liver, I mean uh, uric acid, to help you actually. Okay? And then the problem with the kidney is that in your kidney is supposed to get rid of all of this uric acid, but because of your body is too acidic, you have a really bad diet, you're eating a lot of sugar, you have a lot of things that accumulate that makes your body very acidic, a lot of, um, uh, a lot of bad oil, like, like um, a lot of um, sugar in your system that you're being diabetic, you're, you're obese, you're, you're having a lot of bad food in your system, and that can cause your, um, your uh, acid level to go up, and then your kidney cannot eliminate uh, your uric acid uh, from your body, and then uh, when you're not taking enough water in too, and that's another problem, that your body is not flushing out all the things through your kidney, so you tend to keep more uric acid. On top of that, when you eat those food that has a lot of purine and that causes uric acid, then you're gonna have a gout flare. So how do we do it? Uh, we're gonna talk about it on the next video, my home remedies and all the things you can do, but I wanna give you a little bit of a taste of that. It's just, you have to alkalize your body. Okay, there are many different ways to do it on, on the next video I'm going to talk about. But you can, by emergency, you can take potassium citrate tablets that we can neutralize your acidity. Baking soda, you can mix it in the warm water, 12 ounce, into the one tablespoon of baking soda that alkalizes your body immediately. Celery juicing would be helpful. Uh, lemon or cherry. If you take 10 cherry a day before you sleep, that really helps to prevent a gout. And that's a known fact. A lot of studies done about that at the same time. So these are things that I really recommend you do to help to alkalize your body, which will fight the uric acid formation. Number two thing, obviously, that you all know about, we already did this, but I want to review this, is the consumption of a lot of foods and drinks that in high in purine, we talked about that. Alcohol, sugar, fructose, a lot of fruits you have to be careful also because Fruit has a lot of fructose, which is not good for your body because I know it tastes really good, a lot of good stuff in there too, but it has to go to your liver and turn it into regular sugar. If something has to go to somewhere else to be turned into something else, it's really not good for you. I know a little bit it's okay, but fructose is very, very dangerous if you take too much. And then seed oil is another very, very bad thing. Corn oil, vegetable oil, canola oil is really, really bad. A lot of causes a lot of inflammation, a lot of acidity that is responsible for your high uric acid, which causes your gout. Now that you know all of the unexpected causes of gout, it's time to make impactful everyday changes so that you can experience the freedom of eating and drinking what you want without fear of a flare up. In the next video, I'm sharing with you the best home remedies to incorporate in your everyday routine to eliminate gout for good. Until then, get educated, be empowered, encourage others today.